In today's episode of The Swing Report, we've got the TaylorMade 300 Mini Driver. We'll tell you everything you need to know, and Thomas will do some testing for us. Golfers, if you enjoy this content, make sure you like the video, drop a comment, and then subscribe to our channel for more in the future. Also, golfers, for our final all-encompassing thoughts on the 300 Mini Driver, skip to the final chapter. Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf, and today I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a Master Club Fitter at the Minnetonka location. Today we're out on the driving range. We've got the TaylorMade 300 Mini Driver, uh, a unique offering from TaylorMade. They haven't, uh, you know, this is not the only one they had in terms of that Mini Driver category, um, but this is the newest version of it. Um, but it's interesting because it's kind of nostalgic in a way too, because it brings back and it has that same appearance to that 300 series drivers from what 20 years ago now. So. Um, a little bit of, of both best worlds there. We got kind of that throwback to the older look, but also obviously a bunch of new technology in there. So a unique club. Thomas, uh, you look at that, you see it, you've done some very initial hitting so far. What's your very first takeaway? Well, yeah, it's uh, looking down at it for sure. You can see some loft. Yeah. It's you know, not a driver. Now you mentioned going back to like 300 series, that's 20 years old. Mm -hmm. This driver is 307 cc's in volume. Uh, I believe TaylorMade hasn't had a driver in that 300cc category oh, yeah. since 2001. Yeah. So going back to when they had their 300 series drivers, they've kind of kept the, the retro look for that particular driver there too. But it's a little shorter, so mm -hmm. it's 43 and a quarter inches in, in length. Um, it's kind of be kind of one of those kind of in between the clubs really. It's for those golfers that may struggle with their driver and maybe like playing fairy woods better. Mm -hmm. You could definitely play this off the ground if you wanted to as well. It's got a little bit more loft. We've got 11 and a half degrees and a 13 and a half degree head. So there's definitely some options depending on the player's capability. Yeah, it is kind of a tweener, right? It's basically, a, it's, at first glance, it looks like it's between a driver and a three wood. So it's kind of in a way a two wood um, is the first glance at it. But of course, we'll do some testing and figure out exactly how this thing fits in. But um, in terms of the technology, there's actually a lot of stuff that's familiar with other tailor-made woods out there. So on the bottom, you see V-Steel, which was actually initially brought in tailor-made woods in the mid 2000s. They brought it back with the SIM technology um, and it's still visible here with the 300 mini driver. That's just for clean turf interaction, so especially as, um, effective on those off the deck shots. Yep. Um, so also through slot speed pocket, another familiar uh, technology from TaylorMade Woods, low face shots. That's where that's gonna be really helpful. Um, and then you have twist face on there too. So that's that um, kind of technology. I believe it was the M3 and M4 drivers that first came out where they kind of um, have the shaping of the face a little weird where Basically, it helps on toe shots and heel shots, which I know I'm very familiar with those shots. So, um, those are kind of the key technologies. So they've got, you know, those are often, you know, they pack those into this driver from other woods um, to help with the performance. So, it's definitely a tailor-made driver or a tailor-made wood. Um, but now it's just a matter of where does it fit in and how does it fit into someone's bag between, you know, driver and three wood. Right, and we're going to test that today. We're going to do most of the hitting with this driver, but. I did also bring a SIM2 driver and also the SIM2 Titanium Rocket 3-wood. Mm -hmm. Just want to see how it fits in and how it compares to those two models. Yeah, and one more thing too I should note, that has the adjustable loft sleeve too. So um, there is the adjustability like there is with any tailor-made driver. You can um, fine tune your, you know, your, your loft and lie to you know, basically fit the trajectory that you're looking for as well. So a bunch of options there and a bunch of technology in there, but I'm just very curious to see how this thing performs. and in terms of the launch, the spin, the height that it generates compared to a driver in three woods. So um, I'm ready to see you test. Yeah, I'm excited to hit it. So we're beginning hitting with the TaylorMade Mitsubishi. It's like the, the mini driver prototype shaft. This yep. is their stiff golf shaft. You can also get these clubs custom with different shafts here if you would like to as well. Come on in second swing and custom fit. All right, you ready to swing? Let's do it. All right, so Thomas, just before even Hitting, I want to get your perspective on how it looks because that's certainly a club that you you know probably aren't familiar with that kind of shape that kind of size of a wood you know at a dress right yeah it I mean like it fits kind of like a two wood it's okay. kind of what it, what it looks like down looking at a dress uh, I see a, a lot of loft we've got the the black crown finish and then we've got the more like kind of like a chrome titanium face when I'm sitting this down a dress you can definitely see that Chrome titanium face, yeah, okay, uh, pretty clearly. So I know there's some loft on there. We have the 11 and a half degree driver here. TaylorMade also offers a 13 and a half as well. Okay. And as you mentioned earlier, you can optimize ball flight based on going up or down with mm -hmm. the loft sleeve. For sure. Yeah. I am going to need to 
lower that T height. You think so? Right. Yeah, so with it being a little smaller head and lowering the T, might be good for those players that have a little steeper attack angle that don't like to tee the ball super high. Sure. Even still, though, I have a hard time lowering it lower than that, but we'll see how this works out. This is a little high right. Getting after it. 113.9. Oh, I hit it well. You hit that one good. Lower spin, 2100. Because the face is closed. 306 yards total. There we go. Oh, that's pounded. Yeah, I think that's pretty much what this club was designed to do off the tee. 286.8 carry, 308.3 total. One more. Nice. So, I don't know if, it, how far did that one go? 289. This looked like it didn't come down. So I don't know if it carried the... Uh, Just didn't come down. It's still going. <laughs> still going, yeah. Uh, so Thomas, I wanted to ask about the feel because, you know, we've been talking all this time about how that's kind of a tweener. Yep. Does that give you the feel more of a fairway wood or feel of a driver more? Well, for me, feel is, is, is like sound. Yeah. And it's, it sounds like a fairway wood mm -hmm. off the, coming okay. off the club face. Does, it doesn't feel as loud and tingy as, a, say, a driver would. It just feels... A little bit more muted, kind of that, that titanium face feel that you get off the fairy wood. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's kind of hot, like it's like that high launch, low spin yeah. kind of feel to it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to bring up these numbers here, Thomas. Um, you were swinging it pretty fast. I mean, I know you've been working on that club speed, 113 miles an hour. Um, spin rate right around 2,500. Uh, so, and then your average total 300 yards, average carry 282.6. So off the tee, compared to your driver, I feel like that fits in there where it's just a little bit shorter than you know your what are you playing nine or eight degree driver right yeah so i got a nine degree driver now shaft length is also a little shorter yes. so this is 43 and a quarter my shaft length i think it's like 45 and a quarter so it's an inch and a half longer yeah um but a little lighter definitely feels kind of like a little lighter i think i'm able to generate that keep that speed up with it yeah even with the shorter golf shaft sure sure yeah yeah the one uh, thing i will say is i feel like i had a little harder time with club face control, just seeing so much loft, kind of looking down at it, I just wasn't used to seeing that much loft. Yeah. Like a, a two wood. That's more of a yeah. visual thing for you, probably. Right. Yeah. And it's going to be different for everybody. Everyone's, you know, I'd say highly you know, recommend throw it in the mix, especially those golfers that do hit down on the ball a little bit. Yeah. That want to lower that tee height a little bit. I just wanted to tee the thing high. Yeah. Even with all that loft on it, I still wanted to tee the ball a little higher because my attack angle is to be up. You hit up on it, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so. Well, I'm interested now in how it performs off the ground. Right. Because that's where I think I'm the most curious about this club where, you know, if there is somebody that really wants to hit a two wood off the turf, chase those par fives that they maybe can't reach quite with a three wood and they want to hit something like this, that's where this club could be in handy uh, if it performs well, so let's see. Yeah, I'm intrigued to see how close it is to the driver numbers. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of ground first, pretty pretty clean. Interesting there, because you, I, I'm watching you make contact. There is a little bit of a, some turf interaction, I guess, behind the ball there, but right. you still caught the ball relatively cleanly. Yep. You chased it out there 282 yards. Yeah, so, so. You can, you can, we can see here that the ball was here, I caught the ground here, so that's, that's yeah. a good eight yeah. inches right there. Yeah. But at least it wasn't a big divot. No, it's still. interesting. That's probably a lot of attack angle work too there, though, because you're right. still able to hit up. The, you hit up on the ball 3.4 degrees. <laughs> Drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that one is. It's pretty good. Right at the target. So kind of the same. Same kind of shot there. It's a little bit behind yeah. it, but it's getting through the turf pretty nicely. It is. I I'm actually very impressed by the fact that it's still kind of gliding and hit, making good enough contact to hit the ball 280 yards. Yep. Pretty similar strike. Mm -hmm. 
Is that just a little bit shorter? Not really. Not I mean, really? the actually the numbers are very consistent. Because it had a little shots. fade to it on that one, but it uh, the spin did not jump barely at all on that interesting. one. Interesting. So. Same shot every single time. I just know I'm catching that ground just a little, yeah, behind, just a little bit. Which is, this is pretty interesting, the fact that this club's performing that well, even though not quite getting perfect contact. No, I mean, it's, yeah, you're, you're still carrying the ball. Every time it's been over 250 yards. Um, we got one more shot here to hit, I suppose. Yep. But um, you're, you're, it's very consistent. Every, all of the spin has been between 3,700. So yeah, it's been a very consistent performer so far. That ball flight's the same every single time. That one seemed a little cleaner. It's just that tiny little, maybe not much of a fade, but I feel like my dispersion pattern for sure had to be better than it when is. I was in it's much better. Those last two were essentially the same shot, <laughs> yeah. according to the map here. So I'll bring up the the table here. Um, I mean, as to be expected, you lost a little bit of distance with hitting off the turf, but that's normal. I mean, hitting what, driver off the deck is going to be different. What happened to my efficiency rating? Because as I mentioned, I feel like I was catching just a little bit of ground first, so I had to be slowing it down so, just a little bit. So, interesting. Off the T, 1.43 smash. Okay. Off the turf, 1.42. Okay, so it's so, just I mean, slightly Just slower. ever so slightly, yep. but spin went up by about 1,000 RPM off the turf. Okay. Uh, which is probably the, I mean, that's the big reason why the distance dropped yep. essentially 25 yards from T to turf. So, yep. you know, I mean, it's what you expect. And I will say that dispersion is pretty darn good. Um, and the ball flight was pretty similar, really, for all of them off the turf because you were hitting it what? I mean, I'm trying to go to find this height here. Um, all of them, you had 93, 102, 104, 101, 106 for feet off the ground. So that's pretty consistent. Yeah. No, yeah, the ball flight impressed me off the off the ground it's 280 off the ground it's, it's pretty pretty good yeah yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with that even when i wasn't maybe catch, catching it perfect right it seemed like it was doing the same thing over and over every single time i was just having a harder time with my attack angle still being slightly up on the ball yeah, yeah. with a larger club head getting good contact at, at yeah impact. that was and just, you know I, yeah. I feel like a lot of golfers that might think about this you know you've mentioned how people have a steep attack angle hit down on it Yep. Um, it, I feel like there's are, there are a lot of people with, that are in the same boat as you where they hit up on it and then they maybe do struggle with, you know, the, the fairwood shots, making the clean contact and stuff. But it's, it's good to know for those golfers that this, you I mean, you're making contact with the big ball first, so to speak, the earth right. first. <laughs> and uh, you're still make, hitting the ball 280 yards out there with that club. Yep. No, it's good. Forgiving. That's the that important thing. Forgiving, yeah. speed pocket, you can catch a little low on the face. Also, exactly. It's also, also right there as well. So forgiving, forgiving, and going straight. So can't complain. So I want to test now, and we don't have to show all the shots where we're hitting, but I want to test just to see where it falls in. Yeah, yeah. So I've grabbed a, I grabbed a TaylorMade Sim 2 10.5 driver, and I grabbed the TaylorMade Sim 2 tie, the rocket. Okay. So that's got 13 and a half degrees left. I want to see kind of where, where this club fits in, essentially. Yeah. So let's collect a little data and compare the numbers. Okay. Okay, so Thomas, you've tested now the mini driver 11 and a half degrees, both off the tee and off the turf. Then you hit your Sim 2 10 and a half degree driver and 13 and a half rocket Sim tie, Sim 2 tie three woods. So we have kind of, you know, we can look at this and try to fit it in place here. So first of all, I wanted to get your look and feel comparisons hitting both Sim 2 clubs and then also the mini driver. Did you notice anything? Was there a huge difference? Yeah, I mean, the first thing is when I placed that two wood or the mini mini driver down yeah. essentially it looked like like i said it looked a lot smaller than what i'm used to for, for a driver shape mm -hmm. and then grabbing the we went back to the sim 2 driver here this looked like it had about 500 cc <laughs> on it yeah <laughs> so it, it, it looked huge um one thing i will will say numbers wise what i just kind of noticed and i haven't seen taking a deep dive yet but i don't think i hit the dr sim 2 driver really any further and that's what it, what it comes down to, is making sure that you get fit for the right yeah. club head, the right loft on the club head. Because I clearly would not use a 10 and a half degree driver, because right. I was spinning this, I think I was spinning this more than a couple you, of the other different options there. And it was, you, just wasn't going anywhere. Right, you, yeah. so you actually spun the Sim 2 10 and a half degree driver over 3,000 on average right. um, RPM. And it was actually 2590 with the 300 mini driver. So 
uh, very a lot more efficient ball flight in terms of the spin with the mini driver compared to his ten and a half degree driver. Yeah. Um, so I think we're just by looking at that, you know, somebody wouldn't be playing, you know, a ten degree driver and then put an eleven and a half degree in there. It would have to be in terms of the different lofts. You want to be able to hit different shots with these clubs in your bag. So if you're going to put that in your bag, you need to have either that be your driver as kind of your longest club. Yep. Or maybe a lower lofted driver than 10, probably something like eight degrees where then that, this mini driver can fit in there for you. Yeah, and I play eight to nine degrees with my driver yeah. all, all the time. And yeah, I, this was just spinning too much, 10 and a half degree driver. Just wanted to compare it and see how, how it compared mm -hmm. because the lofts are very similar. But yeah, I for sure, yeah. maybe a better test would have been to hit my gamer and then see how much further the dry, actual driver's going compared to sure. this. But you can see the importance of loft yeah. and also CG placement and club head design. And yeah. getting fit, of course. Yeah, and then so you hit the three wood as well. The, that's yep. the rockets. That's thirteen and a half. That's the stronger lofted three wood. Um, so, what did you think about that? You did hit that out the, a little bit of uh, it kind of teed up a little bit. So, what did you think about that and comparing it to both off the tee and off the turf for the three hundred? A little less spin, it seemed like with the with the three, and it was mm -hmm. kind of chasing out there. It, it like, was, yeah. Yeah, it was. It was getting close to the same distance, so it kind of fits in. So. I wouldn't probably be a player where I'd play the 300 mini driver. Yeah. You know, if I wanted a, a three wood or a club that goes really far, I'd probably opt to a stronger loft of three wood. Yeah. So this is 13 and a half. You can always change the loft a little bit or change the, the settings a little bit to yeah. optimize trajectory. I shouldn't say loft when you're changing the hosel adjustments. But yeah, it's it's interesting. It's it's another option for golf. Yeah. Essentially is what it, what it's showing here. And that's why it's important to come in and test them all. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I think the numbers are really interesting, but I think it's, if we're talking about off the tee, right? I mean, it, it does kind of fit in there um, where if you were to take your eight or nine degree driver or something like that, compare it to the 300 mini driver and then that three wood, the Sim 2 tie, I think we'd see that club, the 300 fall kind of right in between everything as it should based on the loft and um, kind of the, the you know, tweener that it is as a two wood, so to speak. Yeah. So, so what were the carry and total numbers with each club? So let's just so, say the, the okay. mini driver off the t or, or off the tee. Let's just do it off the tee. So the three off the tee. So we have, um, we'll start with the mini driver, 282.6 carry, 300.1 total. Okay. Uh, the Sim 2 driver, 10 and a half degrees, 280.3 carry, 293.9 total. So you actually hit the mini driver off the tee farther than the driver. Because the spin was less yeah, because the Because of the driver. 500 RPM difference in spin. Yep. And then the Sim 2 tie three wood, 13 and a half degrees, was 271.7 carry, 294.4 total. Right. So all pretty similar. And I yep. think, you know, the lofts are a little bit bunched up in a way that it's only three degrees of difference separating them. So Correct. But, um, I mean, it's, you know, interesting to test them out and, and kind of like try to figure out exactly how this fits into the market where golfers out there, whether it's somebody that... Maybe they hit down on the ball a ton, like you said, with driver. They need a little bit extra loft. They can tee it down lower, and it, this is the perfect driver for them. But also, if that golfer out there is playing a six, seven, eight degree driver, and they want that maybe a, a maybe a smaller, more controllable club to have in their bag, this is where that kind of mini driver could fit in as well. Yeah, it's interesting because there are some guys on tour that have been playing the mini driver here to try and yeah. gap in in their bag, which has been really interesting to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thomas, the mini driver, what a kind of an interesting test there. Um, it was, we found some, um, you know, fun tidbits about that thing where it kind of, it does, I think, fit in as a sort of a two wood club. Um, but I think the next part here is trying to figure out which golfers, you know, will, will play that thing and it'll fit in their bags the right way. But the technology's all there. It's kind of right in between. It's got a kind of a lot of those, the fairywood technology from TaylorMade, a lot of the driver technology from TaylorMade. So it really is a tweener and it's just about which golfers will play it. Yeah, so there's two things that stood out to me with this. First off, a 10 and a half degree driver and this for me when I was testing yeah. were very similar. So once again, it's important to make sure you get fit for your driver or your mini driver. Yeah. The other second thing is optimization. It's gonna be very, very specific to a certain criteria of golfers. Yeah. Not every golfer is gonna fit into this type of driver. Yeah. But it's important to get fit for the right golf shaft, the right length, because obviously this is a little shorter than what the, this the standard length for a driver is at 43 and three quarters inches. This is their their standard golf shaft that we've got. I would like to see more testing with a more optimized golf shaft that would yeah. swing my fit my profile a little bit. Sure. And then also optimization with regards to uh, the uh, the loft settings that you can mm -hmm. do on on the driver. I mentioned this is a 11 and a half degree one we're testing with. 
you can open the face up, close the face a little bit, make it a little easier for, for a player to really optimize their bull flight trajectory. Right. So I think that's the, the biggest takeaway for me is it really did perform just as well as a 10 and a half degree driver when I was hitting it. Yeah. It also basically did the same distance as what the three was doing as well. Yeah. So it kind of fit in there. If I was hitting a driver that had less loft on it, it would have gone further. Right. But it's interesting that a driver with a similar loft to this with a little longer golf shaft basically did the same thing. Yeah. That's something that stood out to me. And yeah. now the, the spin numbers were a little bit different. Um, the, the 10 and a half degree driver with regards to CG and a bigger head spun more. This being a little smaller club head spun less, just kind of like the three wood did. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting because there's, you know, there's, I think there's multiple kinds of golfers, but it's a, there are specific niches of golfers that will work and be able to put this in the bag. So I think the one that I think off the bat is, you know, a player that plays a you know has a ton of speed plays a low uh lofted driver already in their bag and there is a gap there between the driver and the three wood where they maybe don't want to go up to something 13 14 they instead want something that is maybe 11 and a half or maybe it's you know there are other 13 and a half degree option as well but those can fit in they can be a t-club that they use with maybe the you know t the fairway is a little tighter they need to make sure accuracy is is focused on rather than distance that can be the mini driver and then right. at the same time the golfer too that you know wants to help maybe a little bit more help launching the ball into the air just doesn't maybe, hit a driver well it doesn't a just doesn't driver hit a driver well, well. wants yep. something a little bit more stable and accurate to use this is also a potential driver that someone could put in their bag as the longest club so uh, those are the type of golfers i think of when i have seen the testing and I've look at this club but um, i mean the technologies are there the twist face through slot speed pocket uh, the adjustable loft sleeve there and then the v steel as well on the bottom um, so it's got everything you need for both the fairy wood and a driver and uh, i can can't say enough how forgiving it was to hit off the ground as well. Yeah, no, yeah. I didn't hit a catch it perfect. We've got the divots here to kind of prove yeah, right that, that I was catching a little bit of ground before the ball. But it was still going about 280 yards off yeah. the deck when I wasn't catching it perfect. So it was forgiving. You can hit off the deck as well. Absolutely. Well, golfers, Second Swing is the place to go to get your mini drive if you're interested. You stop at secondswing.com or you can contact one of our five store locations. Schedule a fitting with one of our certified master fitters and uh, we'll get you set up with a mini driver if you're one of those golfers that you think, hey, maybe I need this in my bag to help my game. So, um, and lastly, of course, we invite you to subscribe to our channel. Um, keep coming back to uh, the Second Swing YouTube channel for more content, more product reviews, more insight from a master fitter like Thomas here. So, Thomas, thank you for joining today, hitting the shots, providing your insight and feedback today. Yep, this is great.